Good morning, colleagues. Thank you very much. Let me recognize the Minister of Defense, the Zambian Minister of Defense, and his colleagues from outside of Zambia, Minister of Home Affairs, Secretary of the Cabinet, representing the public sector in our country, overall public sector, the U.S. Ambassador to Zambia, who has just spoken. Thank you for your uh, kind but uh, precise words and uh, visiting senior government and security officials uh, from our continent, Africa and outside, um, senior defense and security officials from our republic and indeed others, um, distinguished participants, obviously members of the press who are very important to deliver the message is that will come out of this uh, platform to the wider audience, and it's important that we respect the media. May I start by welcoming all of you to Zambia? You're truly welcome here. Some of you may be here for the first time, and we're delighted to have you here. Uh, please relax. This is your place one of your many places. In today's world, we can never be restricted to our homelands. Every place around the world is of interest to us. You know that better than I. We're delighted to have been invited to officiate at this critical uh, forum, this platform, a very, very important platform and His Excellence has already drawn that parallel, um, security, peace, stability on one hand, uh, does provide the platform uh, that would allow us to focus on managing all our resource envelope um, to take care of the developmental agenda, which is very important, especially for us who are elected into public offices, it's important that we deliver better lives for our people. And these two work as a package. You cannot drive a normal four-wheeled car with three wheels. One wheel is down, the car won't move properly. So this is the way I define security, managing security, peace, stability, to allow us to carry on with a big agenda. So thank you, Excellency, for articulating that um, uh, very well. So I may just uh, flip through that because you've covered it well. As Commander-in-Chief of our Zambian forces, I'm very clear in my mind the linkage that within the security apparatus that this platform critically occupies to our routine, to our mundane operations in our country. So thank you to the Africa Center for Strategic Studies for involving our own men and women in the security services and more importantly for selecting us to host this forum. Thank you for that. Thank you very much. Sometimes we take things for granted. This forum could be hosted by anyone else, but it's here. So as Zambians, we must appreciate that. Zambian culture welcomes visitors. Absolutely, from time immemorial. But now we want to welcome visitors, get them to relax, learn from them. We must be perpetual students, learning from others every time, every day. So hosting allows us to achieve those aspects as well. I already touched on the importance of assuring peace and stability as our fundamental roles, those of us in this room. But I'm quick to say that you alone cannot do it fully. The cooperation of the civilian wings are extremely important. The political side, the political will, leadership, strong leadership to support your needs 
to keep Zambia, to keep our region, Africa, and the globe safe is equally important. Because you may be skilled, if you don't have the support of the political leadership to get the resource envelope that you need to execute your mandate, then you are impaired. Many times, we the politicians anyway blame you, even though we have not given you the support. But as a leader of this country, a democratic country, we want you to know for the local wings that you have our support. For the rest of you is that we will encourage others in my situation, and I know they are doing it already, but we have to encourage each other to continue providing that critical support uh, to allow you to fulfill your mandate, which is a people's mandate. I have said many times, and I repeat it here, that instability anywhere is instability everywhere. Haven't we seen that? Just scan your brain around what's going on around this continent, within this continent, outside of this continent, how it has affected our economic activities, our ability to deliver, as His Excellency said, basic food to our people, supply chain disruptions. It's very clear. So we are and must be each other's keeper. We are and we must be each other's keeper. And that's why sharing common practices, best practices, like you are doing in this session, is of vital importance to achieving our national stability, peace, stability, security, as it is for the region and indeed for our global community. So, we want to encourage you to remain attentive in this workshop. Please remain attentive, alive throughout, and maximize the knowledge sharing amongst yourselves. I must say, part of our challenge, you yourself seated here, is when we have governed challenged in terms of governance because a weak governance arrangements, a weak rule of law in a particular country, denial of basic services to our people, as has already been touched, food, job opportunities, business opportunities, arising from economies being deleric, economies not functioning, exposes you in this room and our nations to very, very serious risks because such an environment where there's a breakdown in the rule of law breeds an atmosphere which encourages citizens to do things that we don't want them to do because they impinge on, they take away from that security, that stability, which we really need crucially. So, as leaders, you sit here as leaders of our wings, it is important that you are connected to the economic sectors, those who run the economic sectors, social sectors in our countries. Equally important, very, very important. But I must also thank our own security wings here at this stage, thank all of you from different countries, for the services you have consistently rendered to fly high the flag of security, peace and stability. Sometimes we take you for granted, but I want you to know you are appreciated. The work you do is well appreciated. Please remember that. The work you do is well appreciated. We must be alive to the increasing threat of terrorism, extremism in our individual countries. But extremism, terrorism has become a mobile threat, very serious threat, extremely mobile. 
tied to illegal migration. I'll give you an example here in, in, in Zambia. Of late, we have so much of illegal migration. In one instance, people were packed in a container from the Horn of Africa. And along the way, they suffocated. And their bodies were dumped here. Not at a border point, but in Lusaka here. The question is that, how was it possible to pack human beings in containers from the Horn of Africa through many borders and along the way human beings suffocate and die and they are dumped here. Many questions arise, isn't it? What were the activities in the country of origin? How got they got organized, loaded, moved, cross borders? How did that happen? How were we not able to identify that? <laughs> Isolate that? You seated in this room must develop goose pimples at that stage. Now, let's assume they didn't die. Very, very sad. They died. Very, very sad. Who were they? Where were they going? What was the mission? They could easily have destabilized countries along the way. Yes, the flip side of that is human rights, to which we're signed up to. But the coin has two sides. So it means we have lapses. Submit. Now, I urge this platform, the managers of our center, the managers of our center, working with individual teams in this room and governments on this continent and across, that cooperation, intelligence sharing, use of technology, technology allows us to do our work much easier now than ever before. It even makes it easy to do things we couldn't, be, we couldn't have been able to do 10 years ago. Let us utilize technology. The best technology available so we can secure and provide stability in our territories and in the global community. I believe you have picked the message I'm sending from that example. If we can scan goods from ports in Beira, Wolves Bay, West Africa, and we know what is in there, we should be able to use such technology to know what's going on within our jurisdictions. And with this cooperation, we can save our countries, we can save citizens, and indeed economic activities that are so important. I think there's been a touch already made on the importance of the national security strategies. And flipping that, can we develop a national security strategy without a regional security strategy? Can we? Effective. Mm. But that's the beauty of what you're doing here is to say security in our own jurisdictions can only be secured if we are working in a holistic manner. I really believe in that. So, but it's important that we have an approach that is specific, that is broader, that understands 
the complexities of our world. And you are the experts. Who am I to tell you what you know already? Maybe I'm just reminding you. Colleagues, let me repeat my expression of gratitude, appreciation to all of you and those that are not present in this room that you work with for doing what you've been doing over years. Situation could have been worse than what it is today. So thank you again. And we want to encourage you to continue working tirelessly to protect our citizens. Citizens in our individual countries must feel secure and then when they see one of us and the men and women that are out there we've left behind, the citizen in our country, our countries must feel safe to approach you and not run away from you. Especially the policing side of the security wings. Only 20 months ago, in this country, an average citizen, if you saw the policeman, they will run away from the policeman. Just 20 months ago. I think I'm, I'm just about right. 20, 21 months ago, if you want. Before the change of government. Because attitudes were different. A bit of extremism right here. Heavy-handedness. But since we took office, we drew a line and that this is not part of what we need as a country. 20 months later, 21 months later, the police will mingle with civilians. No one discharges tear gas. No one is discharging, raising guns all over the shop. It's our duty to make citizens feel that we are their friends. And believe it or not, you know it better than me. When that situation obtains, the citizens become your best informers for any of the security threats that you have. Because by and large, insecurity is instigated by fellow human beings. And they're in the communities. I know you know that better again than me. I'm just reminding you. So, at that point, even within your group, civilian and military security wings are integral to the agenda that we have, that brought you here. And as political leaders, we are very keen and are very, very interested in seeing a harmonized approach to the challenges that we face in today's world. Thank you for your attention. May God bless you. Thank you.